Hello, beautiful people. My name is Lisa Bartle. I will be your reference librarian for today. If you are here, I hope you are here for the APA in-text citations explained for the seventh edition. This is the standard format for an APA in-text citation. It's in parentheses. It has the author's last name, a comma, a space, and the year. And then you close the parentheses. Of course, if that's all it took, we'd be done right now, and there's other things I have to tell you, but that's the basic. Now, before I go on, I would like to talk about paraphrasing. Uh, APA 7 encourages, nay, nearly demands paraphrasing rather than directly quoting. Paraphrases do not require a pagination but they do require an in-text citation. That, again, is the author, comma, space, the year, if you're doing your basic. So no direct quoting if you're doing APA, or ex at least under very specific circumstances, which I will cover in another slide, but paraphrasing does still. All right, so it's all about the number of authors in your APA 7th edition in-text citation. If you have one author, and you want to use that author's name in your narrative, and there's stylistic reasons to do it or not do it, and it's really just how you feel about the matter. But if you're using the author's last name in your narrative, it will be author space, and then immediately in parentheses, the year of the item, because it's always author year, author year. They gotta be right next to each other. Now, if you choose not to use the author's last name in narrative, that means it will be parenthetical, just like the year, in which case it will be parentheses, author's last name, comma, space, year, close parentheses. Now notice that period at the end of the closed parentheses. That doesn't mean that every time you do this, you will automatically be ending your sentence with a period. You, you may not be. Um, you may not have a piece of punctuation there. You may have a comma. You may have a semicolon. But the important part is that the piece of punctuation, if you have it, is after the closed parentheses, after rather than before. Now, if the item that you're working with has two authors and you wish to use their names in narrative, then you will um, make sure you always, the first author is first because they really are more important or they have the power to say that they are. In any case, they're first for a reason. So it's always the first listed author who is listed first and then the word and, and then the second listed author, last names only, immediately followed by the year or if you choose to put it um, not in narrative and all parenthetical, then it will be parentheses, first author's last name, and then an ampersand, and then the second author's last name, comma, space, and the year, close parentheses, and any necessary punctuation, if any. Now, once you hit three or more authors, uh, for in-text citations, you're entering et al. territory. So et al. If we look in the box here, uh, this is my way of, of hoping that I help you remember uh, et al. Uh, et al. means and others. It's Latin. And being Latin, it has three different kinds of others. Um, the neuter and the masculine and the feminine. And when people started inventing this, more than 100 years ago, they didn't want to mess with all those different kinds of Latin words that all meant others, so they abbreviated it all, which covers all of them, A-L, with a period, and that is why the A-L takes the period, because it is the abbreviation, whereas et, uh, like the French, just means and, so that's et al. So the rule is, if there are three or more authors in your original document, a uh, referenceless citation, whichever, um, then it will immediately be the first author's last name followed by et al. So in this case, Garcia et al. or Garcia and others, followed by the year. So if that is in narrative, we can see it here, period, space, and that's not a real period, that's an abbreviation period, and the year. And if you choose to do it all in parentheses, and here we can see Garcia et al. period, comma, space, your publication, close your parentheses, and any necessary punctuation. All right, let's talk direct quotations, because remember I talked about paraphrasing, and I said there are only very specific uh, times when you will um, use a direct quotation if you're using APA 7. So uh, if a direct quotation is a definition, is memorable or succinct, or, and this is not in the slide, if you are really 
wordsmithing, disputing some very particular phraseology of the author, then you can use a direct quotation. Now, a direct quotation um, must include a page number because it's a direct quotation. So again, you're only rarely going to use it, but when you use it, they do want a page number. So in the first example, well, here, let me look at the template. That's in parentheses if we're doing it parenthetically. Author's last name, comma, space, year, and this is the new part, comma, space, and P period space, and the page number close parentheses. So if we look at the first one, which has one author, and in this direct quotation, and now I'm kind of throwing a curve at you here, I'm imagining that the quotation was somewhat possibly lengthy, and so it started on page 25, but it didn't end until page 26, and we can only be talking a couple of words, but either way, you know, they have to look on page 25 to see the beginning, page 26 to see the end. Because that is a span of pages, it has to be PP period space, then the span, close your parentheses, necessary punctuation. The uh, uh, example underneath is simply an example of using the name in narrative. And so if you were using it in narrative, you got your author and your, your parenthetical year, and then you've got your direct quotation. And after your direct quotation, then will come your page immediately. In this case, I'm imagining it's a brief quotation that is found on a single page. So that is parentheses, period, uh, P period space, the single page where you can find the direct quotation, close parentheses, necessary punctuation. Now here we have a problem. So we're going to talk about problems that can happen with in-text citations. Remember that the entire point of an in-text citation is pointing. And it is pointing at the complete citation in your reference list. So if it's not pointing correctly, or if the pointing is in any way confusing, that is a problem that you need to fix. So in this particular example, we're seeing that there are two teams of people. And the, the really important part is that they both published something in 2010. Now, if you look at the first one, and you look at the second one, you can say they each have more than three, or three or more authors. So an in-text citation for both of them because they're both in 2010, would be Murawski et al. 2010, right? That's how you would cite them according to the rules I've told you so far. But that would be bad because there are two different citations in your reference list and that in-text citation is not being clear as to which one it's pointing to. So how would you solve this pointing problem? And this is how you would solve it. You need to put as many names as it takes to make the in-text citations distinct and point correctly to the citations in the reference list. Now, we know that the first two names on both teams were the same. That's, that's our problem, right? But the third name is different. So it's the third name that we must go up to. So for this one, because the third name defines the different citation, you would have to cite it like this every single time so that it was clear. And in the second one, again, you would have to go to the third uh, name because that defines the difference. Now here's a new point I haven't said before. Uh, you would then put in the et al, because you don't need to put all the names, the third name already defined the difference. Now, Remember, this second one, it had five names in it. So when I put down the first three, there's still two left. And that also makes et al acceptable. Et al is inherently plural. You cannot use et al if there's only one name you're not mentioning because it's plural. And if there's only one name, you can't use it. Them as the rules. But because this one had two names I wasn't mentioning, I could use at all. Okay? You with me? And that would be the correct citation for each of those if that were the case for you. If you have a... Um, uh, it, it is not impossible, far from impossible, if you're writing a paper that an article or a web page uh, could lack an author. That can happen. Though 
be careful. Make sure it, it just because it's not a personal author doesn't mean there's not an author. It could be a government author. It could be a corporate author. Those can be authors too. I am imagining some sort of web page that you felt contained important information, even though there's not an author. That's sort of what's what's in my head or something you think is an article, but let's say it's a web page. Okay. If that were the case, then you would have to use the title of the article as the author. I mean, you've got to put it somewhere in your reference list. And if you don't have an author, either a government or a corporate or a personal author, then the title would act as the author. Since the title is acting like the author in your reference list, that's what you need to point to in your in-text citation. So you can see that we're using the title of the article, web page, whatever, in quotation marks and in title case. Notice that the comma comes before the quotation mark, the closing quotation mark, and then a space, and then the year, and then we close and necessary punctuation. And if you wanted to use this title in narrative, then it would be, again, uh, just outside of the parentheses, uh, title of the article in title case and in quotation marks immediately followed by the year, because remember, the title is acting like the author and it's always author year or author date. And then you would go on with whatever it is uh, you were saying. Now, the, these lower examples here, these are books that don't have authors, but that I really, I've shrunk down the font. I couldn't help myself. I was being anal retentive. Since I put in an author example, I thought I'd put in a book example, but I'm thinking another 20 times and I'm going to phase that part out entirely, probably. We'll see. Anyway, um, I do also want to point out that in this example, the um, title of the book that is in parentheses and in italics and in title case, I have also given a page. And remember, I only put that page because the blah there, that is my direct quotation. And um, so I put the page for the direct quotation. Though, and this Okay, and then this example, someone's bound to jump out and say, but you put the page here. You don't have your blah in quotation marks. That's another little tiny rule, little tiny rule, that if you're doing a, a paraphrase from a large document, not an article, APA 7 specifically says, like a book, then if you wish to be helpful, you could put in the page. So that is what this example is, or these two examples are all about. Alrighty. Now, multiple sources. Now, if you've already done some reading of scholarly literature, you might have noticed multiple sources. And they're often at the beginning of an article uh, in the literature review where they sort of place their research in a bunch of other people's research. The purpose of the multiple sources is usually just to be nice to your reader. Um, something like, there have been many studies that did the research this way. And then you might put a series of, uh, uh, in parentheses, multiple sources. Um, but we are going to do it this way, like these people, right? So what are the rules for multiple sources? That's what I'm getting at. Notice that they are alphabetical by the names of the authors. Now, I'm not saying, uh, here's an example where the authors are Smith and Jones. The first author is Smith. Smith goes first. What I'm saying is that Lauer goes before Mancha, goes before Smith and Jones, because we're imagining that if they're interested and wish to pursue these citations, they are immediately flipping back to your reference list and they're looking up in order. There's Lauer, Mancha, and Smith and Jones. So that's why these are in the same order they appear in your reference list so that your reader can easily find them in order. Alrighty, so that's how you properly do uh, multiple sources. And here is an example that is like our team example before, except now it's a single author with the same last name and the same first initial which I haven't actually specified yet, but that has to do with uh, reference lists. You, you never put, you hardly ever put an author's first name. Uh, and again, the same year, same year is key, right? Because your pointing would be off. These are two different things. One is an article title, one is a book title by Garcia, comma, space C. 
and they're both 1981, right? So that's the, that's the problem. Our in-text citation would be unclear. So how do we make our in-text citation clear in this case? We couldn't make it clear in text until we had worked out how it's going to work in our reference list. In this case, it would be Garcia, comma, space, C, period, space, 1981. And then before you put the AB, it's going to be alphabetically. It's not that articles come before books. It's that A goes before B, right? They would be then alphabetized by their title. And once you know how they will be alphabetized by title, then you add the A and B to your reference list. And once you know how it looks in your reference list, now you can put them in correctly in your in-text citation on the bottom. The top one uh, you can see, uh, the top one you can see is um, all parenthetical, and the bottom one is with author's name in narrative, but either way, they're pointing correctly now. This is one of the uh, things I get asked most often, and that is uh, the example to follow. You have read Corton. You read the heck out of Corton. And Corton has a lengthy discussion or maybe a translation of Petrie. So the question is, who do you cite or do you cite both? And the answer is, you only cite that which you have read. So if you have only read Corton, then you can only cite Corton. Now, there might be very, if you're going to be anal retentive and a really good 4.0 student, you want to dig up Petri. You, you really do. But there are reasons not to dig up Petri. Petri could be in Russian, and you don't speak Russian, so you are really depending on Corton's translation. So, you know, there's, like I said, good reasons. Sometimes it's from an Australian journal, and oh my God, try and get your hands on articles in Australian journals. That can be a challenge, I know. So good reasons that you can't get your hands on Petri. So how do you cite it if you couldn't get your hands on Petri? And that is you can say their name, or you, you can say their name, and then in parentheses, as cited in, that's the important phrase, as cited in, and then the thing that you did read and they will find in your reference list, in this case, Court in 2017. Now, here's an interesting thing, and I haven't found further clarification. This is the example in the APA blog and in the APA manual. If you don't use Petri's name in narrative, uh, APA 7th edition is really anal retentive about original publication dates of things, whether they're translations or, you know, original documents. God help you. It's a real pain. I kind of hate it, but there you go. Um, they want you to put the original publication date of this thing that you never even saw, that you didn't even use, that isn't even in your freaking reference list. Yes, it's crazy, but that's what they want. So, uh, Petri, comma, space, uh, uh, 1975, comma, space, as cited in the thing you actually used. Now, where are you going to get this? Well, if Quartin used it, it's going to be in Quartin's reference list. So that's where you're going to find the original publication date, or what I assume is the original publication date. I imagine there are all sorts of other things that could happen, but we're just going to go with this for right now. However, let me go to the LibGuide. So I am going to go to the FAO Library homepage because I want you to know where the LibGuide is so you can find it. And scroll down to Library Guides, Library Guides. And we scroll down some more. And we go to citing and writing. That makes sense because APA is a citation style, so that makes sense. And the first one right here, the APA citation guide, the top one. And when we land there, you will see that there are a number of tabs. Now, for this workshop, the in-text parenthetical citations is the correct place to go, so you can click on that. Now, right here is the PDF that is basically this content, uh, just in an easier to print out form. And there is this exact same PowerPoint. Whenever I alter the PowerPoint, I always upload it here. Um, but if you have any questions, contact me right here, APA 7th edition. Um, you can email me. You can make a consultation appointment. I will not proofread, but you can definitely ask me questions uh, if you have them. So don't hesitate to do that.